So I, I have uh, blatantly taken this uh, from one of a number of several images uh, on the internet. Um, for instance, I think I might have shown this one. And I think maybe Lois also sent on this one. They're both pretty much taken from the same point uh, of view from the person who took the photograph at different times of the year. Um, and what I'm going to do is do with some sort of a composite and take things out of one that I appreciate and use in my demonstration. Um, so if you have seen these three pictures, and I think Lois has sent more to you, uh, and you want to adapt your painting to what, how you would like it to go, then that is absolutely fine. I, I hopefully, I will give you sufficient information about watercolour techniques to help you to do that. Uh, I am keen uh, to, uh, I, let, me let me tell you why this picture is of interest. Now, when I talk about the four stages, talking about and thinking about the composition, as well as making the initial drawing, is all one stage, you could argue. So my interest in this, and why I think it should work as uh, an image for the uh, painting, is, is that I like the fact that there are three different areas of water that we can deal with, each one slightly different from the other. Um, especially that we've got um, the distance here. This is a sort of distance area of the painting coming into the media, the middle ground here, and then the foreground here. So I, I like that um, very much, and, and that gives us plenty of opportunity to try uh, our watercolor techniques with different, uh, different styles. I, um, the, the picture that interests me of them all the most is this one because I like the um, the very early spring feeling that you've got here. It's a very light blue, even cold blue sky here. There's uh, th there's there's not the sort of foliage and greenery that you see in here, um, and yet I. I in making this painting, I, I want to try and keep something of that early spring feel, but to, 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 to maximize the colors that might be available and the light, just, just to lift it a little bit from, from this, which is a little bit dark, um, I, I think, in its values. So um, that's uh, where I'm going with this. Um, so thinking about, or oh, one other thing, uh, I know because I did do a practice painting of this um, a while ago, is, is in terms of the composition. Um, I, I need to think about where I'm going to particularly position that line, because um, the water falls from there down to there and then to here. And I'm quite keen to get some, um, a, as much of this ledge here, which is a ledge that's here. I think the person who took the photograph, the two different people who took the photograph, have taken it with an eye level of about there. I know, I know um, it's quite useful to know where the eye level is. Um, the reason it's about there is because if you look upwards, you can't see above that line and you can't see over the top. Uh, you can only you can see some of what's going on here, hidden by this rock here, and then you can see a lot of what's going on here. So, in terms of the eye level, which which has a lot to do with perspective, um, then that's where I think it is. All right. So I'll begin with making a drawing. I'm using. I'm work. By the way, I'm working on 300 gram Sanders um, cotton rag watercolor paper. Uh, Forgotten how big this is. This, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's about fourteen by eleven, um, and it I've taken it from a large sheet that I've cut into four and just used a quarter of it here. So th this is uh, good quality three hundred gram uh, paper that that absorbs the water very well. Um, I'm using a probably a softer pencil than I normally use because I want to make a mark 
so that you can see it just in case uh, you can't. So what I'm looking at now is, um, is just working out the composition in terms of a drawing. I'll do as little drawing as, uh, as is possible. So I've, uh, I think it'll sort of become apparent what I'm doing here in a moment. Um, I've got a waterfall that comes down here and then some a bank that goes up there. Now, if I if I feel I've made that too far over to the right, I'll I'll, I'll adjust it. But I, I I don't think so. So um, so it goes there. The water comes down to here. So this is the eye level that I was talking about, and I think we're going to have another lot of water that comes down. Now I'm actually drawing in the outlines of where the water might be uh, because we're going to actually paint the water right at the end of this. Let's just have a look at what's going on here. So this area here, if you look at your pictures, is actually some sort of, um, it, it goes around the corner, so it's almost like a cave. So we've got some, um, we've got some water that comes down here, um, and so that line's quite. That line I've drawn there straight is quite good because it's on our eye level, and. Um, that would be quite useful to do this. Now we've got, we've got some water that comes down here. That's right. And ground that goes away with trees and everything like that. I don't need to put any of that in. Um, I don't, um, I'll put in as little as I can get away with. Let's just see what's going on here. This is the area that I wanted to make sure I got uh, got this into the painting somehow. So we've got, it looks to me like a fairly precarious ledge. Um, so let's, let's give it a precarious ledge feel something like that and that that runs away down to the water and there's a there's water that runs down here so we've got the water that runs here I think I've almost done as much as I want to do for the moment yeah that's that's my drawing for the moment uh, I, I don't need to draw trees in anywhere. I don't need to draw the shapes of the rocks, the anything else like that. That's that's enough for me to begin my painting and go into the second second stage of uh, of the painting. Um, and all all that's in here, we we can work that out as we go through uh, the painting. That was the first stage, uh, the first step in uh, making the, the painting we're doing today. Uh, the second one is putting down the light colors. And, and here I will at, uh, attempt to cover all the paper with uh, paint um, of, uh, in the main light uh, colors. And the, the colors that we put down here an awful lot of them will not be painted over again because they will be the light colors that come out as we put darker colors over them. So um, I, I am happy to accept uh, colors merging into each other. In fact, I, I really want it done. At the, at the end of this, this stage, you look at your painting, and you think, my goodness me, what have I done? But, but it, it is the light colors that you're going to use later on. So here we go. I'm going to use uh, a, a large, but my large mop brush. I'll, I'll introduce the brushes as I do them. This is a squirrel hair brush, which has a great advantage of going to a point 
um, and, and similarly hold and also holding lots of water. So um, as I go through the colors on this palette that I hope you can see here, this is the palette that Lois has sent. I think she sent you all a picture of, um, but, but I will mention the colors as I go through them. Um, and uh, th this will end up as being a, a wet painting, which uh, I will dry. We will need to have dry before we go on to the third stage. But let's let's handle this stage now. Um, I'm I'm filling up my brush uh, with uh, water, um, and I first thing I'm going to do is is put something in here which will be th this is the distance uh, area here um, and uh, if I if I put in some this is raw sienna I put in there just a, a bit of that that's that's very wet at the moment and um, the sky I've talked about this being springtime uh, the, the blues that I have available available to me are ultramarine blue that I'm pointing to here, um, cerulean blue here, although I put manganese blue, that's um, not dissimilar, and also I've got cobalt blue here, which is probably the least translucent of my paints. I'm going to use cobalt, pick up some cobalt blue. All my colours are artist quality uh, Windsor and Newton colours and just take that over here if I am um, and uh, uh, I'm happy for it to touch the raw sienna that I've got there let's just make that a little bit okay so so that's uh, my board's on a slight incline so um, things will be running down here just a little bit Let's, uh, let's move on now um, and start putting in colours. I said that I wanted to introduce, uh, uh, have this as, as, as a light, uh, probably light morning, um, where the light's picking up the colours that are there. And although there are no leaves on the trees and not a lot of foliage around, it, you've still got some really nice uh, colours here. So. Um, Right, let's just have one little rule here, and that's that we, we don't paint the water. I'm not going to paint, leave that white, leave this white, leave this, the white of the paper, the, the, just the plain paper. We'll, we'll come back and deal with that later on. I think that's the best way to, to tackle what's going on with um, uh, with, with the water, which we'll deal with later on. Whilst I'm doing this, it, the, it, the painting sort of painting, it, the, the, the paint's working itself. It's, for instance, it's mixing itself in here. Um, and and I'm, I'm very happy for that to happen. So uh, I, I'm going to, um, the, the light's coming this way, coming down from uh, you, as you look at it from the right to the left. Uh, so we've got light coming a lot onto here um, and coming through this gap here. Uh, but but the, the shadows are around this area here and, and, and underneath some of the rocks and things. So, so I'm going to bring in some greens and some reds uh, and... Um, use those as the light colors that I'll go with. So I'm going to my lemon yellow and uh, ultramarine blue. See what I get out of this. And I'm going to put some of that down here. Just adding a bit of yellow to that. It's going to be um, the, the, all the uh, foliage that's hanging down and that sort of thing. I, I'm, the light colours of it, I'm, I'm just popping in here 
at the moment. Um, looking at the picture, uh, I'm not going to bring any greens into here for the moment, but let's let's move around this sort of area and think about the rocks there. Uh, for that, I'm going to uh, go to burnt sienna, this colour. Um, I can put it down wet and weak to begin with, just uh, just dropping some in here. Uh, and I'll be revisiting this as um, as uh, as the this stage goes on. I've just put some colours in there at the moment. With this uh, cotton rag absorbency that I've got uh, in this paper, I I have the ability to be able to move away, do something else, come back and it's still damp enough for me to work in. With cartridge paper, you often find that it's it's dried up. Uh, Someone's asked you, Mike, is, are you doing wet on wet? I, I'm, I'm allowing it to be wet on wet. It's all sort of mixing in with each other um, at the moment. Yeah, it is in effect. Um, but but, but I'm, I'm painting lots of water straight onto dry paper and that's, that is giving me the, um, uh, the the wetness that I want. I'm going to bring some greenery in here. Uh, and a little bit of here. Now, <clears throat> I, I think hopefully you'll be getting an idea of, of where I see the greens and the, the uh, rocks that, that are building up here. Um, I'll, I'll go back and pick up. When I'm working back into a wet area, I, I want to go in with a drier, stronger paint. If I don't, we had people asking this last week, I, I'm going to get these um, cauliflowers or blossoms, uh, they're called, I think, in, in, in America. Um, so I'm, I've actually picked up some burnt sienna here and, uh, uh, and it is stronger. I'm, when when it, the time comes for me to paint the rocks in and the, the grass and the, everything falling down, um, I, I'm, I will want all sorts of different uh, values of, of a colour that I can play around with. But I'm happy also to have bits of the um, paper that uh, aren't touched um, with paint. But as I as I move around, you'll you'll see what I'm doing. I, I'll be probably painting over those. I'm going to bring in some. Um, I'm using this sort of green, yellowy green, and this red to try and uh, bring in some vibrancy to uh, the, the light that's going to come through. Um, that I'm trying to get in this early sp spring day here. So let's. Um, Let's move over back with the um, burnt sienna. That's lemon yellow, ultramarine blue. I picked up some raw sienna there. Um, it is the the wetness and everything blending in together that I'm really interested in here. And if in doubt, keep keep it all very very light. So I'm jumping between raw sienna, burnt sienna. Oh, I've gone over my river. Whoops. Let's see if I can just clean that up a bit. I didn't mean to do that, but it, I mean, it's not a problem, but uh, I can. 
Just try and rectify it. That'll be fine. is this platform that I was telling you about. Again, trying to avoid where we've marked off the, um, uh, the water should be. You can see I'm letting the water just mix, mix it. So I'm, I'm not doing any more to this area at the top just at the moment. I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. Picking up some burnt umber here and just a strong colour, less water in it than just a little bit. Right. Uh, now I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. Th this is the, the hill going away into uh, the water. So um, we'll, we'll worry about that a little bit later on. I just wanted to get some, some, something light here because I'm going to be bringing shadows in here at some stage. Now there's a lot of water swilling around in here. I've kept um, my three water areas uh, clear um, and I think that's where I'm stopping now. Yeah, that's where I'm stopping. So it's all wet. It's all still painting itself. Uh, it looks a bit of a total mess. Um, it, the colours will go lighter when they're dry. And of course, they will appear even lighter when they've got dark colours over them. Uh, I won't be doing anything more to the sky. Um, uh, and there'll be areas here that I won't do any more to because they're my light areas. But um, that's where I've got to now. Good luck, everybody. Off you go. OK, for the next step, the third step of the four, that uh, we're dealing with with this painting. Um, I find it useful to work on a dry surface. So all of that that we did in the second step should be dry by now. Either, either allow it to dry normally in the sunshine or with a hair dryer, uh, as you wish. Uh, colors have merged into each other's hair and that, that's just fine. But I've, I've tried to keep the idea of the this being a grassed area, some some green on the tops of these um, bits of uh, rock here, that uh, and a little bit of green here. Although that seems to have disappeared a bit in 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 the, the softness of it. Right, this next stage is uh, about putting on the dark colours. Uh, especially shadow colours here. Now, um, when I was doing my practice one in this, I realised we could get really bogged down with lots of detail here. So I'm going to try and see if we can cut that down to, to a minimum. Uh, what, what we have, um, as, as I see it, is uh, rocks, and I remember this from my trips to the waterfalls in Astrofelta, 
is, is that the rocks are, seem to be in layers. Um, and you probably see that on some of the photographs uh, that, that uh, they, they, the layers show up quite a bit um, here and even here and so forth. So um, I, I'll, I'll try and get that sort of feel that we've got lots of rocks and layers. We've got overhanging uh, bits of greenery uh, coming in on this. But we're going to begin with the background and uh, I want to create uh, some distance. I mean, quite often all landscapes seem to work best if you think about them as being the distance the middle distance and the foreground, which, which is what we have here specifically. We even have it very much with the three kinds of waters that I described at the start. So I'm going to deal with this, which, which is a sort of run of trees going away into the distance uh, and uh, some land running down here. Uh, remember that the, the sun is coming from our right, top right, down to the left. So a lot of this is going to be in some kind of shade, but I don't want to over, overstate that because it is in the distance. Now, um, the two brushes I'm probably going to be using most now are going to be uh, this brush, which I pointed out earlier, this uh, uh, mop brush, which is a smaller version. Well, it's a smaller mop than that one. Um, but it also goes to a point which is very useful. And also this brush known as a rigger, which is a really old um, hacked up uh, brush, which was looked a lot better many years ago, but I still still like it very much. It's synthetic here. It's a really not, it was never an expensive brush to start off with, but uh, I'm going to be using this brush, not only with this point, but I'm going to be using it as the painting goes on, on its side. In fact, not, not just on its side, I'm going to be sort of trying to use this little bit down here just to pick up. You see, the paper I'm using is a, um, is a semi-rough paper. It's known as cold pressed or not. Uh, if you're using a rough paper, that's great because when you run your brush, a dry brush, uh, with dry paint on it over the top, you'll pick up the, the raised surfaces of the paper. That, that's really nice. This is somewhere in, in between smooth and rough, but it will, will still pick up uh, the roughness of the paper. So these are the two brushes I'm going to be using primarily for this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put down uh, a... Um, The, the trees here, which show some kind of foliage a little bit. Um, I, I want to make use of this yellow and have that up against the sky. So let's just see, uh, if I pick up, say some raw sienna here. Uh, now that's much too bright. Uh, so let's add a little bit of say burnt umber, just a little bit of brown to it, and a touch of blue, just, and there's not a lot of paint there, and I'm going to use this rigger, and uh, I'm going to create uh, somewhere into the sky, uh, let me just show you what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something this, this is going to be the, the treetops. Now, as they go away, they will. I've just added some water. They'll, they'll go there and then here. And uh, I will. This is wet. Now it's wet on dry. So I'm going to just take a little bit of blue. Um, touch. Which blue is it, please, Mike? Ultramarine blue. Um, I'm just bringing. A little bit on here. This this can be dry. It can be quite dry because it, you're going to use the water. Let's just see how that goes. And um, if I go back to my blue, 
just make something a little bit darker with a bit of blue, bit of brown here, and just put in some sort of tree, tree trunks here. Now where, where it touches the wet paint that we got on there, of course, it would just sort of get lost in there. Um, and for this bit of land that runs away, I, I, I think I'll, I'll go back to whatever I picked up here and see if I can make that work. Let's just swap the brushes around. Mix up a bit more, some burnt, uh, some raw sienna, a little bit of brown, blue. And I, I deliberately want it to fade off in the distance. Let's just and avoid the water. That's too much, so you can just see line of the trees, some, something like that. Now, the, 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 we don't want to draw a lot of attention to this area because it is in the distance. Um, I'm just bringing up something a bit darker, um, which is ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt umber here. And it's just... Uh, Something like that for the moment will, will probably be enough. Um, this is drying a little bit here, so I might put a couple of tree trunks with, with strong paint, almost no water at all, just Okay, so that, that's that's something going on in the background there. It's, the, it's working itself over the sky. I've been using some of the yellow that we put down there initially. Uh, now let's move on to the rest of the painting and, and uh, work over that. Um, I, I'll I'll work top left coming down this way because I'm right-handed and, and it, it just makes it a little bit easier to. Um, avoid um, smudging the, 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 the painting. I, I think you, you, you'll probably get an idea pretty quickly what I'm doing here. Those of you who are waiting to see where, where do you go with this. Um, and uh, as soon as you feel confident, if you haven't already begun to do so, go ahead and uh, move on with your, your painting. But I'll, I'll try and make it clear as I go on. I'm going to use this brush, this mop here, and I'm going to mix up um, a colour that is essentially a shadow. I'm going to put quite a lot of shadow in now, um, which I will go over later on and make some areas darker. But I, I'll try and get the general feel for the shadows that are falling, do I show it in my drawing? Yeah, let's go back to my drawing here. Try and get the general feel for uh, the shadows that are sort of coming down here, um, coming under here, under various bits of greenery and so forth, coming down here, and into here, uh, so that that's uh, and and also around here, and and indeed any shadows that I want. I, I'm quite keen to, to to have something suggesting there's a tree casting a shadow. So the colours I'm using for that uh, will be ultramarine blue. Um, this is going to be really quite a blue shadow. Uh, uh, I will bring in. I will bring in some burnt sienna as I'm doing there 
but not too much. I, I don't want the shadow to get too brown. The reason for that is because a lot of this that I'm going over will be uh, have brown in it anyway. So because these are translucent colors, something blue going over that when it dries will will work quite well as a, a gray a gray blue. Uh, if I put too much brown into it to start off with, that might make it difficult. So I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be almost certainly be going backwards and forwards, uh, mixing and remixing colors. I'm happy to do that. So ultramarine blue, just a little bit of um, burnt sienna and using the, the flat of the brush where necessary, but particularly using the uh, point of the brush. I just want to have a look at the photograph here. Okay, right. I'm going to start bringing in and leaving showing these light areas that we put in when we did that first stage. So I'm I'm using the point of the brush to remember the lights coming from here down down to here um, and and I can suggest some of the things that are happening with the rock formations now it's a question of how dark do you get this shadow um I I will be coming in with darker colors later on. So I don't want to make it any lighter than that. I'm, I'm hoping it will dry uh, lighter anyway. So let's just see if that's going to do. Uh, the, the, the light comes down here, it catches various areas. Let's just see what's going on here. I, I, it, it might be that I need to make it a bit darker, but we'll, we'll, we'll see in a moment. I can, because it remains um, wet on this cotton rag paper, uh, I, I, I've got the flexibility of coming back and working on it. You know, for instance, if I wanted to make some of this a little bit darker, I could pick up some blue, a little bit of burnt sienna and, and just pop it in there and it'll sort of start to work its way around. These structures and the rocks will be um, further emphasized when we go into dealing with something dark. I, I, and I don't want to lose all the uh, great light colors that we've got in there uh, from our, our first stage. So I'm, I'm just popping uh, around. So, so if you're wanting to move on, um, you, you can see that I'm trying to create the shadow areas that will be cast, uh, will be made by the light coming down from the right. Um, down here we've got quite a sort of overhang and uh, uh, but but some of these light areas I, I don't want to lose those I want to make make those work for me I'm taking some of the um, water out of the brush. I'm just making a few marks there. I could use my rigger for this if I wanted to. Just creating marks here, which, which are marks you couldn't actually 
managed to achieve just by drawing in with a point. And okay, so let's just see. Maybe maybe that's enough for the moment. As someone said, watercolor painting is a bit of an act of faith. You you are um, hoping that it all will be all right when you you, you do your last song. So let's just um, let's get some ideas of. There's the light coming down from here, so it's it's showing up some of the structures of this rock. Leave the water out of it for the moment. And you make up, you make it up where as 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 you see fit as as you go along. Um, just try and avoid the, the white paper, the, the water that you've got in. So I'm Moving uh, across to here, do I want to do anything more to that? The, the rocks seem to be a little more straight lined and edged and hard edge and everything, but the greenery maybe is a bit softer. So just make bits of it a bit softer. Right, I'm going to move across to here now uh, and do the same sort of things, get some more shadow colour back into action. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Oh, I think that's a bit too brown. Let's just put some more blue in. And It's a bit sort of chasm in there, so we'll deal with that when we come to our next stage. Let's just um, create an idea of some of the rocks here. You make them up yourselves as much as you want. I, I'm, I'm aware that in order to get the sense of uh, water and uh, where we, particularly where we need the frothy moving water, we're going to need to have something dark ag against it. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of shadow being cast here, I think. Let's just come out of that. Uh, moving around the whole painting doing this and I think I'm going to just make this area a little bit more shadow filling in more more of that area and possibly this where I'm going back over uh, the place I painted um, remember uh, use stronger colors than you did first off um, and then you're using the water that is on your paper to help you make the painting and you, you will avoid the blossoms or the um, cauliflowers that we talk of. I'm aware that there's a lot of uh, shadow coming down this side of the hill. And 
making the shadows a little bit stronger up front here. So this brush is quite useful. It will turn itself to working to a good point when you need it or flat areas when, when you want those. Again, I'm aware that there's a lot of shadow being cast here, so we're going to bring some of that down here. And then I'm going to deal with this area. Um, mix up some more shadow. This will probably take up a bit more paint than I've used so far. The um, this, this a lot of this is in shadow and particularly where you, you've, you've got ledges they will be in shadow but I'm, but I'm also quite keen to suggest that there's some light coming in here so uh, I can afford to I'm using my brush quite flat at the moment um, And I talked earlier about you get the feeling that there's a fairly precarious ledge here, um, which would be in shadow. Now we're up, we're up close here, so um, uh, the the foreground is um, going to have some stronger marks, I think. So here, here's more oh, shadow I've just mixed up, um, and I want um, want to suggest that. The, trees or bushes throwing their shadows maybe that would do it Right, let's have a look around and see, do I need to, I think I'll bring some more shadow into this area here. Um, yeah, just like that. And then down here, I, I want the light to, travel down this little inlet here a little bit so um i don't want to overcook that i think maybe i've i've made enough of a statement there
Right. What about up here? Because I'm. I think I'll deal with all of that with the next in the next darker phase. The details. Um, Yeah, it's not. Right, so hopefully the colors that I wanted to zing out in the um, spring light are beginning to show up here. I've got this as a sort of distance um, here and um, trying to get some feel for the rock formations around here all the time leaving the water out of it um, ah now what am i going to do here um This area here is, I, I really just wanted a flow of water going down there. So I'm going to, I don't know, can I backtrack a little bit? Just, um, just take that on a bit here. And Okay, I just felt that I wanted to add something in there. Let's um, dry that and put some shadow on it. Then I have finished. I'll do. This fourth step in, in the watercolour, um, sometimes it, it, uh, it doesn't take very long at all. Sometimes it can be a very short one, but this one will probably take longer than any of the other steps we've gone through. So um, I just need to be uh, aware of that. There is one thing that I've done here that I do want to change. Uh, and I've only just noticed it. And it's this that I'm looking at here. I talked about the eye level being about here and how you couldn't see what was happening up there. And yet you can see what's happening up there. And um, so what, what I want to do is, is, if I put a little line here so you can see what I'm talking about, if I put that line there, I want that to be the highest bit of the water that you can see. And just that little bit up there throws the perspective a little bit, but I'll lose that um, by just making this a little bit darker and, and um, get that out of the way. In fact, I'll do that, I'll do that now. And, um, and then we'll see where we'll go with that. So uh, if I go to my, Sienna and um, I'll just take that there I make that a bit darker a bit of blue and and just lose it by Doing something like that. I just wanted to make sure that it's it's just that, and and it, we can lose it by putting other things over it anyway. I I, I think, but um, it, it just that little bit. Where the water, of course, runs flat like that. Sorry, missed that, but um. 
yeah okay it's only a tiny little thing but uh, it was niggling me okay uh, I, I'm going to um, work up here uh, with the um, bushes the trees uh, and all of this uh, th that's going on here uh, and bring in some of it that's going over here that's going to go over what we've done in the background and that's going to further push this hopefully uh, into the background and then um, I'll come in and work uh, around these areas here now what I'm what I'm doing is I'm for a lot of this uh, I, I'm putting in the very darkest bits in the shadow so we've we've got our shadows our basic shadows put in here but I want to emphasize some of it just some of these shadows uh, uh, by bringing in some dark areas uh, when I get on to, to doing this. Um, and so a lot of what we're going to be doing in this stage will in fact be uh, dark. I've got to make this, I, I need to bring this out in front of that. So I've got to make that, that sort of cavern in there uh, darker as well. Um, and then as soon as I can, I'll get on to this water that we're, we're going to deal with here. So um, let's see if I can get away with using this mop brush, this sort of one. Um, and I'm going to mix up the dark colours. So what I'm going to use for my dark colours are ultramarine, it's ultramarine blue, this colour that I'm putting in here now. Um, burnt sienna now if if you're not using ultramarine blue you don't have that uh you, you could use something like a phthalo blue or or some dark uh blue with red in it anyway that's what we're using and i'm bringing um in effect a sort of red to uh the blue which is the burnt sienna that's gone too brown for me now I have another colour here that I may or may not use as I go along. That's this colour I'm pointing to, which is neutral tint. Uh, another colour that would do the same job would be Payne's Grey. And that, that colour is one that I tend not to use on its own, but it's quite good if I wanted to go darker uh, still with, with what I'm dealing with here. Um, so let's just see how we're going to deal with this. Um, right. I've having said I've having mixed that up. Uh, I'll come back to it in a moment. I think. Um, and. I'm going to bring another brush into play. This is called a sword or a dagger. Uh, I, I think it did come from rosemary. It's it's a brush that holds more water. Uh, it's great for making lines, and you can do fine fine lines with it. I've got. A, I, I think this is Kalinsky, um, but um, it also it is is if you start moving away from fine lines it's very difficult to control so i'm i'm hoping to get some of these uh, rather arbitrary natural forms that are growing out of the bank uh, by by using these so let's mix up um i'll go to my burnt sienna in fact i'll i'll, I'll use burnt umber which is a sort of although it's warm it's a sort of duller color here and um, I, I'm going to start um, painting these trees and bushes. Uh, so. uh, the, these, this color that I'm using here will and these marks will get lost with some darkness that I'm going to bring over them at the moment here. Um, 
we'll see how this is going to work. What colour are you using now, please, Mike? Well, I've, I've, I've got a burnt umber with a bit of burnt sienna in it at the moment, just, just there. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm switching around. I'm, I'm, it doesn't show this in the photograph, but I'm, I'm going to put some kind of uh, a haze up here, just, just where th there might be some leaves. Um, in fact, there aren't any leaves in this time of the year. But so if I if I go back to my rigger brush and a sort of brown, just happy to add a little bit of blue to the brown, and and this is very light. I'm just running the edge of it over here. Just a, just a little bit. Now, whilst that's wet, uh, I'll, I'll go back to my very dark colour that I mix up here. In fact, I might even make it stronger by off to one side. That's very strong in the end of my brush. And... Um, If you've got a, a brush like this, you'll get these marks if, if, if you can use um, something thin. And, and I'm also dropping some of this really dark color here. Now, what, what's happening with these, these marks that go up into this hazy sort of um, leafy area is that the because that's still wet that, that that's softening up. I'll come back to this I think in a moment and put in one or two larger marks but I'm creating a, a, a sort of feeling of there being a lot of growth coming out of the top of this uh, mound here. Let's, let's just do no more than that for the moment and I'll, I'll come back to it. Now, um, I'm, let's just put some, some few little marks. I'm going to my very dark colour here. Remember the light's coming down from this side so I can, I, I can emphasise some of these shadows with a few marks here. Using more uh, haphazard marks rather than just straight lines. And in some places I've just create a bit. Will, will, um, will help to give it a, a more natural feel on that one. Okay, so let's move around. I, um, I think I'm going to do this more quickly with my mop brush, so I'm going to switch to my mop brush. Okay, I'm using the points, just making a few marks here. Trying to make the shadows that I'd already put in work for me. This you can actually get more done with a mop brush than you can a rigger. So Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here.
And I'm going to be working in this way uh, around a lot of the rest of the painting. Um, if, if I, I don't have to have it all the time as dark as that, I can just make some lighter bits. is the overhang that I was talking of earlier. So if you get, get in the habit of not necessarily painting every, certainly not painting over what, what you have already done, um, making what you have done work for you. Um, I'm picking up a bit of neutral tint there, just adding, making this a little bit darker. So depending on how much you, you want to make of the type of rock structures or um, the greenery and uh, so forth that uh, we've got here, then then it will take you more or less time. Um, what I'm going to do is is paint this bit and this bit, and then do these two bits of water, just in case anyone is leaving early, and they can see me beginning to work on on the water. It's this that is the, the real moving water that we're going to deal with, but you, you, you begin to get an idea of what's going on there. Um, I'm just moving across this other bank and bring in some silhouetted um, bushes. When I work out in my own head, I'm going to get this this effect of the cavern going in here, but it's, it's, it's almost certainly going to involve going darker with something, but uh, um, let's just see. So don't worry about the moving water just at the moment. I'm going backwards and forwards, mixing up the dark colours that I need. I think I've, I'm going to have to do something a little more dramatic there. So let's just get something good and dark and um, I, want, I want this bit to come forward. So I've got to make this a bit darker to, to achieve that. Uh, 
Yeah, that'll probably do it. I'm going to bring that out here. Right, let's switch my attention back to this bit. I'm returning to these trees and I've gone back to my sword and Let's put one or two larger trees in. So hopefully having put that brown in first and then work something darker over it, it gives the impression there's there's more of it going on behind. I'm sort of half squinting at this and, and trying to see where the 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 um the dark areas might be and the all the rocks hanging over. Okay, let's move on down here. I'm aware that there is shadow that falls across this water here, and I'm going to deal with that late, later on because this, this bit jumps out at you. Um, but as I said, I'm, I'm deliberately leaving the water. Till the end. And I'm just seeing what I can do about these ledges.
bit of ground falls away. Right, um, I'm going to keep going with this and now just deal with get, getting the idea of what's happening with the water. Um, we're going to use as much as we can the white of the paper for the um, water that's um, moving and churning itself up. And there's quite a bit of it. Um, I, I, can see, I can see nothing here really. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do anything to that. Um, I'm going to do a little bit to that and get a sense of it falling down and churning up a little bit there. Um, I, the, the, I, at some point I'm going to bring a bit of a shadow down over that water and onto here. And then I'm going to deal with the uh, water that's cascading down here and frothing itself up here and, and, and flowing away and also coming down here as well. So um, as much of this will be done with using the paper uh, that I can and uh, and this is where the rigor will come into its own. Uh, I'll be using this a lot with quite dry paint on it but I'm going to be doing quite a lot of my painting with just the edge of the rigger down down here almost where it meets the ferrule uh, and uh, very little if any at all with the point of this brush so the principle behind this is that I'll create um, a uh, a some watercolor and water on the paper which suggests the, the dark areas where it, it's very much more noticeable here, but slightly here where the dark areas are. And then um, in where I need to emphasize that, I will drop some darker color on. So let me just begin with this. I'm gonna leave this uh, for the moment and, um, and then what color, I'll pick up a bit of, let's get, that's too dark. Let's get rid of that. So maybe picking up some something a bit like that and, and, and a bit like that. But I've also got this dark colour here that um, might uh, that, that I'll use for dropping in some real dark bit so we've got water cascading down here and if um I'm, I'm working on if i'm just taking if in doubt um leave it out and and let the pain so I've, I've just put in a a couple of marks there um can you just and, get with the colors again please mike well i i just used a bit of raw sienna and um, and I, I just didn't want to make it too dark. But whilst whilst that is still wet, I can drop just a little bit of paint there, just to suggest. And in fact, if anything, that's uh, in some ways it doesn't really matter too much what the colour is. There's just something here, for instance, where, it, where it's coming over the edge I've just put a little bit on there and I'm going to just drop some dark there it, it will start running down here and and painting itself in any case when we have finished this uh, and hopefully made as much use of the white paper as as is possible we'll then come in with uh, the gouache and, and where necessary, titivate it up a little bit. So what's happening down here is that um, the water is being churned up a little bit and we can only, 
we only just see this. Remember, this was a, a sort of eye level here. So uh, I'm just, you're probably. I've just put a little bit in there. Some of you might have painted it so you see more of that, in which case you'll have more to play around with than I have. But uh, I've, I've just, just dropping in some stronger paint on little bits of it and let, letting it paint itself, really. Um, it's very tempting to put in, um, cover up more paper than you need to. But the other thing is that I will be bringing in some gouache and the gouache will work uh, as frothed up uh, water very well, but it needs to work on something darker. So I, I, in order to get this frothing up, I think I need to make that a little bit darker just there. I mean, that already creates a little bit of turmoil there, but we can add to that a little bit later on. Um, okay, and um, I, I, now this is all going to be in shadow here, but nevertheless, I'm, I'm going to, using my rigor and a, a dark one here, I'm just going to make some marks which suggest maybe the water. Uh, what's important here is that I'm leaving um, some some white areas there but when i put my and i'm, I'm dropping in some darker color uh, in fact what i will do i'll just make that a bit straighter there yeah because it the, the water is less turbulent along along here all right so I'm, uh, when i put my shadow across the water here a lot of that will be lost, but I just like like you to see that maybe there are things happening turbulence wise, but it's in shadow there. Okay, so that that's all that I'm doing for that at the moment. Uh, now on onto here, I'm I'm doing pretty much the same sort of thing, but before I do, um, I I want to bring some of the colour that I brought into this painting into here some sort of green just to balance balance it up um, and I'll do that by uh, making yeah I'll do it in the, the same way that I've principle I've done here where I put put the color on and then I'll add some dark to it so if, if I if I take some lemon yellow and um, little bit of cerulean maybe. Now that's way, way too bright. So let's add some ultramarine blue to that. I've got sort of something in the roughly turquoise range there. And um, I'm just going to bring some of that here. I'm using, using my brush like this to suggest the water churning up a little bit. I'm doing the same thing that I did with my Rigo, just the edge of this brush. And um, some of this um, yellow stuff that's down here, I'm, I'm just going to touch into leaving if I can, little bits of paper, which which are the um, the water sort of moving, swilling around. I, I'm just trying to blend this into here. I wasn't quite sure how to handle that when I did it. Now this is will because it's still wet. It will run. A bit more blue in that. I'm paint, painting wet on dry, and some of the marks I'm getting. See if I if I drop.
Now this is where we've got things frothing up. So I'm using my uh, my, my rigger to as you see to suggest that the water is churning up and it sort of runs away a little bit there. And here I've just picked up some dark colour that I already had. There's a lot of painting is done by just seeing what's left in your palette and, and using that to an extent. Um, but where, where this is still a little bit wet on the page, let's just get something a bit darker, not too dark, and just I'm just dropping little bits in there and, and that will work its way down whilst the, the water's, uh, the, the paint is still wet. Let's just do a little bit here. Yeah. And the water that's running down here, uh, I'm going to do much the same thing. Go back to something that's a bit lighter. Uh, Make sure there's some water in it and um, so I'm, I'm trying to I'm, I'm dragging my brush almost using the metal uh, down here um, to suggest that it's coming over the edge. Now this little bit here, I think I'll make that a bit greener. So let's pick up some lemon yellow, a little bit of, uh, add some black to it, maybe just a little bit. Uh, And down here as well, just a little bit up. This is much the same as I did back there, but it's on a larger scale now. I'm conscious that I'm trying to get the, the effect of tumbling um, water. Uh, so if I, if I drop some, something darker in that and just, See if it can start to paint itself. If we do, if we do um, too much, we, we, we can resolve a certain amount of it by going in with the gouache here. Let's just get an idea of some. Water there. And the water that runs down here froths up and I'll be able to create that by sort of working the other way around, coming down a little bit. The secret is to leave as much of the paper to do the work for you as possible where you, where you want it to be frothy. And as you'll see, we will be able to add to that a little bit with our gouache at the end. So I'm going to bring the shadow into it now, uh, dry it first, and then get the gouache and 
pop it on and see what more needs to be done to this. I've just got this feeling that I want this to be a little more yellow, but I, I can deal with that in a moment. So. All right, returning to shadow colour, I mean, if I'd been clever, I might have done this before I started, but I wanted you to see, I'm just changing my water, it's too green. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to leave these white areas of the water completely, um, so that became a separate exercise, but I mean, you could incorporate that in your painting as you go along. So uh, I'll go back to my raw, uh, French ultramarine. A little bit of burnt sienna. It's all dry now. Um, And let's see what I might need to do. It's just wherever I want to add a bit more shadow. Just put that in here. Um, and bring some of that shadow down here. Some of that shadow across here. A bit more, maybe across here. And now I'm just going to put some white on it and, and see how the painting goes. Often when you've, you've done a painting, you go and have a cup of tea and come back, you'll see things that, for instance, this area of the painting needs something going on there. And before I, I, I go to put uh, any uh, white on, I'm just going to, I, I still think if uh, I could just sweep something a little more um, warm, warmer yellow there, but let's just see this. So what, what I, I'm doing is mixing up a going back to my dark color here and uh, I just wonder whether we need to just make a few marks uh, as if and, and break this up a little bit there there's all sorts of things hanging down which um,
Now, I may, may, may or may not do any more to that, but what I do want to do is to show you this uh, white on, on the water. Let's see what we can get for that. So I'm using this gouache. Uh, I'm using my rigger brush. I'm using it as almost completely dry and straight out of the tube. And, um, and, and again, I'm probably going to use the edge of the brush right down to the ferrule. Um, here, let's just see. That's still too wet. It's, um, uh, the less you use of this, the better, but I'm just increasing the effect of the water falling down there. I don't want that there at all. All right, so and of course this will always work best against dark. All right, that's probably about enough of that there, and let's um There's a colour called Chinese white which you could use, but I, 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 this gouache is is thicker and stronger. I think it works a little better. I haven't done anything to this one. I've done a little bit to this one here. And a lot more down here. I don't know whether I can turn it up any, anymore. That's probably, probably enough. And um, I, I just want to show you what I'm talking about in changing the hue a little bit there. Why this? And just want to warm it up a little bit, ever so slightly. So this is where trans, the translucent aspect of watercolor is so great. So if if I take um, brush, if I take uh, a color like say um, not lemon yellow, but uh, something a little bit warmer, um, bit of gamboge, bit of cadmium, aurelian or something like that and I've got 
I don't I really don't want to use a lot of it and and I'm just wondering if I do that it, it just lifts the green uh, yeah and we'll just see what that does um, just just work makes it a bit warmer than, than it was before um, and want a bit of rock to show a bit more there we are that's that's it 